Hi, I'm Scott from I'm Free Tours. Now normally, we'd be running tours every single day of Sydney and Melbourne. But unfortunately, due to the current COVID situation, we can't be walking you through our lovely cities. So instead, each one of us tour guides is going to be walking you through our local suburbs. This week it's me, and I'll be taking you through Hornsby. If you hear someone in Sydney refer to the Shire, they're probably referring to Sutherland Shire. But what if I told you there's another Shire in Sydney? Hornsby Shire, the Bushland Shire. It's the biggest local government area in Sydney, stretching all the way from Wiseman's Ferry in the north to the M2 motorway in the south. Now before I go closer into Hornsby itself, we should first acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Darug and Karingai people, who have been living in Sydney for at least 20,000 years. And there are over 200 sites of Aboriginal interest across Hornsby Shire. If you're ever meeting anyone in Hornsby, this is where it will be. The Hornsby Water Clock, or as us locals call it, the Fountain. It was designed by Victor Cusack and unveiled in 1993. There are three water clocks, and the whole thing is based on one rotating clock. But to my knowledge, they've never worked. But what's there to do in Hornsby? Well, if it's a bushwalk you're after, there are plenty of beautiful trails, including the Blue Gum and part of the Great North Walk. Or maybe you'd like a classic film experience in the Hornsby Odeon, a proper old school cinema converted from a theatre. And thanks to our large Chinese, Indian, Korean, Nepalese and Iranian populations, we have some wonderful authentic restaurants, including my personal favourite, the Tandoori and Curry Club. Possibly the most influential former resident of Hornsby was Sir Tanit William Edgeworth David. He was a Welsh geologist who came to New South Wales in 1882, the age of 24, uh, became an assistant surveyor to the government. He discovered the coal fields in the Hunter Valley. He also became professor of geology at the University of Sydney, a position which he held from 1891 until 1924. But he was also an adventurer, and his peak was being one of the first three men to reach the Magnetic South Pole, along with former student Sir Douglas Mawson and Dr. Alistair Mackay. As if this wasn't enough of a resume, he joined the army in 1915, aged 57, and created the Australian Mining Corps, which was vital in the mining and tunnelling efforts during the First World War. He finished the war as a Lieutenant Colonel, was awarded the Distinguished Service Order, and finally was knighted for his service. And in 1920, Edward David returned to Hornsby and built him and his wife a cottage here called Karinga, today a historic site. The other notable resident of Hornsby is Ginger Meggs, or rather, the real person he was based on. Ginger Meggs is the longest running comic strip in Australia, was started in 1921 by Jimmy Banks and based on his best friend, Charles Somerville, a real person who was a resident here in Hornsby. And here we are at Ginger Meg's Park. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this taste of my home suburb of Hornsby and make sure to check out the suburb spotlight from I'm Free Melbourne as well.